Well, it's time for the Dynamite Report. Did you blokes watch the show? Okay, cool. I mean, I did. If that was a rhetorical question. Orange Cassidy and Kyle Fletcher for the international title. 15, 16 minutes. This match was great. Although, you know what it was? I mean, this was not, uh, you know, Orange sold his hand and everything like that. But this was a lot less of a story match and more about, let's see how many big, crazy moves we can do in 16 minutes. So, if you're a fan of moves... And, you know, a match where you can see, like, eight tombstones in the same match. This was a match for you. Fans went nuts for it. And this was a tough crowd. This Vegas crowd, this was a WWE crowd. Like, they just wanted to see entrances and stars. And, you know, a lot of these matches were just, like, they sat there for half the match and then got into the stuff at the end. But they like this. And uh, Orange ended up rolling him up and pinning him. He escaped by the skin of his teeth, which is another one of those really stupid old sayings. Because you have no skin on your teeth. I don't know if you've ever noticed that or not, Mike. I certainly have no skin on my teeth. Not as many times as you go to the dentist. No. God, they're looking good, huh? Mm. I only got, gotta, uh, hey, I only got ready for Vegas. four more trays. Four more trays. Yeah. By, by, uh, by mid-July, my teeth are going to be straight as an arrow. Just like me, in fact. Ricky Starks in a promo. He said, I'm sick of being beaten up by Juice and Jay White, who then showed up and beat him up. Jungle Boy promo, vowing to drive back from Vegas to L.A. as the AW World Champion. What's that bloke driving himself for? He's a big star. He should have a driver. FTR came out for a promo. and uh, It's hard for some people to let others take the wheel, Brian. This was a little weird because... FTR's doing this promo, and, you know, they're burying the oddities. And then Mark comes out. And the last we saw of Mark, they did that that awesome angle where he accidentally, he accidentally got pile-driven, which any of you ever been accidentally pile-driven? That ain't easy, but they pulled it off. So Cash says, listen, Mark, we know you're mad, but don't, don't let these people make you look stupid. We went to hell and back with you and your brother. Last year and this year, we're going to go hell back for you. Why and, is that man so aggressive? Well, the aggressive one was Dax. I know. That's what because I'm saying. Because Dax says, that, you know that pile driver was meant for those other something or other. They bleeped it. He goes, I apologize. Now shake my hand. I was like, brother, that made much of an apology. He's one of those guys. Like, stick the hand in the chest. Like, come on, shake my hand like a man. Like, no, I'm not shaking your hand because I don't it like It gets worse, putts. dude. He goes... It wasn't even like a, a sincere apology. Like, I apologize. Now shake my hand. Yeah. And Briscoe slaps, me. slaps his hand away. And then Dax says, and I quote, I will not allow you to disrespect me on national television. Now shake my hand. Aren't you tequila eyes? Aren't you the one who pile drove the man? You should be on a little bit more. On Can you stop either. trying to stir trouble here? So Sucker. Briscoe gets I'm angry. Representing Delaware, son. And slaps him. Good. And so, you know, then he leaves, and of course, the oddities come out. They're all excited. But he walks up, and he shoves Karen. He slaps the taste out of Jeff Jarrett's mouth, which is too bad, because you know one of the best things about eating is his taste. And when you can't taste anything anymore for the rest of your life, man... That's trouble. But he gets I to the wish top he of the. You just shoved uh, Sanjay. You should have just slapped him on top of his bald head. He gets up to the top of the ramp and he tells Lethal, I don't care about any of these other guys, but you're my boy, and I'm getting tired of this bad word. BS, he says, and he storms off. Overall, this was good, but Dax was a very unlikable character in this segment. Then we had Renee and Sammy. And Sammy does another babyface promo, vows he will not lay down for MJF. Says, people have offered me money all my life. I told them to shove it. I'm going to win that title. We had the House of Black against Metallic, A.R. Fox, and Blake Christian. And this was a little better. They didn't, like, turn all the lights out so it looked like a 70s, no, you know, Van Gogh's WWF night. taping. Instead, they, like, all of this weird stuff, they they projected these weird lights on the crowd. 
and that was decent enough for me. I was. I mean, listen. It's the Whatever. screen that gets me. It's the sparkles on the screen. Just get rid of that. No, what gets me is, and I don't care. Like, if you like it, that's great. I'm not mad at you. But to me, why do we need this? Why? Why did Gallus have to be in a green fish tank last night? I mean. I don't know. It's like everybody hated when Sin Car had to wrestle under a blue light. Everybody hated when. You know, the Fiend had to wrestle under a red light. Here we've got more weird... And I don't even know what... I don't get it, dude. This is over... This is above my pay grade. I don't get this weird lighting thing to make things different. This is 4D chess for you. You know what I want, and I've wanted for, like, months? Is to see House of Black wrestle every week. That's enough for me. Yeah. It is not enough for them. They must have weird lights and weird rules. and, And then it was just like a squash. They beat them in five minutes. It was just all that for that. So, BCC promo about anarchy in the arena. Moxley just cut some promos on this show. This guy gives no Fs, and it's patently obvious. He just wants to go and beat people up and bleed, and he's happy, which is quite a job. MJF promo, burying all of the pillars. Once again, teasing, I want to get out of this place. I'm bored. And you know what? Tony Khan knows my contract is coming up, so he's continually stacking the deck against me. They want this title off of me. <sighs> Darby comes out. Do we have to go back to that? Well, I, I tried to tell you guys that he is not losing the title until 2024 because the the bidding war of 2024 is still going to be the storyline, and there's going to be something revolving around it. And I came up with an idea a year ago involving Moxley where... You know, he's so mad that he vows to resign just so he can take somebody out or whatever. But there is going to be a, you know, a War of 2024 storyline. And he ain't losing the title till he does that storyline. So that's what I think. I've said it from day one. And I won't care about that part of it at all until he gets some sort of Brian Pillman letter like he got from Eric Bischoff saying that he's got his release to really make this work work. That's it. I mean, this is crazy. To me, it's a silly thing to do. Under the circumstances, why? Why? Our chat, I don't get it. What? Brian wants MGF to hold the title that long. Blame it on him. What in the name of God does this have Annie, to do with Annie me? And he wants him to be a fan favorite. What does this have to do with me? It's all got something to hey, do with Hey, you know what, with. Mike? What's that? If he would have gone full babyface, uh-huh. he wouldn't be doing a bidding war of 2024 storyline. So if you don't like it, well, that's another reason maybe he should have gone babyface. It's a weak sauce argument, right? No, now, it's Bob. not. Yes, it is. <laughs> Your top babyface does not do promos going, eh, there's no competition. Eh, everyone's just whatever. I want to get out of this place. No, that would not have happened if he would have just gone full babyface. But he's a heel, so he's got to talk about wanting to leave because that's heat. You're a heel with that shirt open like that. You got to get some gold chains. You know what's that. funny is so. I knew when I came on today that everybody was going to ridicule my shirt. And you're sitting there in that shirt. You're Wrong sitting there shirt. in that shirt commenting on my shirt. You know, that's the pot calling the kettle black, which is another weird old saying. MGF kicked him in the balls. Just like I'd like to kick a bunch of you in the balls, you fans. Word leader promo. <laughs> You'll get your chance tomorrow night in Las Vegas, Nevada. So come on out and meet Brian Alvarez. Yeah, come to the steakhouse. The I'll be I'll be too busy eating to kick you in the balls. Tie in Lady Frost. God, you should see my kids eat at the Brazilian steakhouse. They're my kids. Golly. <laughs> and Paisley's really my kid because she's just shoveling meat in her mouth. And then she's like, more steak. I'm like, shh, they're going to bring more steak, dude. Come on. Taya beat Lady Frost with the road to Valhalla and then Jade and everybody was watching on. Tony Khan made his big announcement, as noted. Hangman Page did a promo. I got to say, you know, how long was this storyline of getting Hangman Page back with the Elite? And they did it last week in the main event, and literally their follow-up this week is he has a 30-second backstage promo saying, man, we're going to take him on Sunday. Not even all together. That's the follow-up. And I know the Bucks had to hide under the ring all night to do the thing at the end, but, I mean, at least, I don't know, to me that was a missed opportunity right there, I think. 
We had Jericho and the Jericho Appreciation Society, Adam Cole and Roderick Strong all coming out. This is where they did the contract signing for the match, and there was a no physicality clause. And so Jericho's just, he's just digging that knife in, which is an old saying. I understand that one. When you dig that knife in. And twist, yeah. And so finally, Jericho signs, and then he says, you know, this match is no rules, and there's five of us and only two of you. And so Adam Cole says, well, you're right. So I called a friend who lives here in Vegas, who I have idolized for years, and this one man is crazier than all five of you combined. And it's Sabu. I wonder what Sabu's name is on the Chugs uh, chat there for Twitch. Uh, if they're such good friends, I didn't know this. I don't know, but that guy came out and everyone went nuts, and he threw a chair at Daddy Magic, laid him out. Roderick Strong and Daniel Garcia, good match. Total WWE crowd. They just sat there for the first half. Then they got to the near falls there at the end. Roderick hit Ed of Heartache, got the win. Willow Nightingale video package where they, in fact, not only mentioned but showed video of Mercedes as Willow beat her for the New Japan Strong Women's title. And then the main event, Penta and Phoenix versus Claudio and Wheeler for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. Match was great, as you would expect. And uh, finally there at the end, Lucha Bros went for the Fear Factor. Claudio tries to hit the ring, but the Bucks come out from under the ring. They uh, hold him back. Penton Phoenix hit the uh, finish, pin him. They retain the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. And then the BCC goes after the Bucks. They escape through the crowd. And then Moxley cut a promo. And essentially, he said, if you don't like blood, too bad. Because there's going to be blood everywhere in this match on Sunday. Which was a nice thing to do. screenshots of the AEW video game. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine what they had to take out of that game for the screenshots that they showed. We've seen Wahoo McDaniel Dusty Rhodes matches that didn't feature that much blood. <laughs> hey, listen, guys. Incredible. Listen, I know a lot of you love AEW. I love AEW as well. But the follow up to Hangman reuniting with the Bucks was not good, okay? Not yet. No. If, in fact, well, let's just think about that. Uh, that big moment when Sami Zayn finally turned on the bloodline. I mean, did they really follow up on the next show with Sami Zayn in a 30-second backstage promo mentioning it? Of course not. It was the centerpiece of the entire show that followed up. And, yeah, you know, they, they built up the match for Sunday. Well, of course they did. It's the go-home show for the pay-per-view. They built up all of the matches. But the big climactic moment of, after all of these years, Hangman and the Bucks and the Elite getting back together, it was a weak follow-up. That's just the fact of the matter. The main event. I was so disgusted. Why does a guy like that that's been a champ for so long have to have three guys come in and help him? Disgusting, isn't it? Yes, it is so disgusting. There was a lot of great matches. There were the first day. The second day was back to this same old crap. Her favorite was Gunther versus Drew versus Sheamus. Oh, Inter- I hate Gunther. You hate Gunther? Really? Why do you hate about him? Just doesn't look right to me. <laughs> it doesn't look right to you. Okay. All right. His favorite was the first 34 minutes of Cody Roman. His least favorite was the final three seconds of Cody Roman. Granny, do you agree with any of these uh, opinions here? What was that? I think she fell asleep. Yeah. Bailey was on Wheel of Fortune mm-hmm. and by E. By okay. E? It said by E. Big E. I Big guess. E. Okay. Big E. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> For your birthday this year, I'm not going to get you something decent. You're going to get nothing. Granny. Wow. (laughs) Comic book villain, I keep saying this. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. 
Don't miss out. Join us today.